it's lopsided again. Why does it always do that? It's like one of these legs is longer than the other or something. Is that better? I think it's better. Okay, let's see if I can do this. This will only be like the fourth try. Fifth try? I don't even know now. Good lord. Okay. Hey there! My name is Megan. I am the creative crafty person behind the Little Fish Stitches podcast, which is a knitting, sewing, other random crafts podcast. Um, today is Monday. It is October 2nd, and the year is 2017. <laughs> um... I'm coming to you uh, a week late, as you may have noticed. Um, last week I was not feeling well, and it just wasn't, I wasn't in the right frame of mind to try to sit up and do a podcast and probably try to hack up a lung at the same time. Yeah, so you'll probably appreciate me not doing that. Um, I just want to say thank you if this is your first time here. Thank you for coming to check me out, uh, see what I like to talk about. Um, I appreciate those of you who have done that. And uh, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. You know how crazy it gets here. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. <laughs> um, okay, so I have a couple admin things to go over. Um, first is Technically, the campsite along Cal has ended as of September 30th. Um, I put the, I don't, didn't have a whole lot of particip participants. Um, so I put a little um, question out there to the people on the chatter board um, to see if anybody else needed a little more time to finish up. And then um, that will then give me an opportunity to draw prizes. So hopefully, I will either announce next week whether the cowl has been extended or I will draw four prizes. So, yeah. Um, and then the other thing is um, I'm gradually inching closer to my 100 subscriber total. So um, if you are interested in getting in on that, um, you will need to be a part of my Ravelry group. And um, once I have hit the 100 subscriber mark on YouTube, I will put a thread up for that with a prompt question of some sort. And I will then draw from that um, Ravelry thread. So for my 100 subscriber giveaway. And if you're curious about the prizes, they will be something that has been created by me. Um, yarn, project bag, most likely that a combo of those items. So, yes. Alrighty, so that I believe is all the admin, which will uh, then, I believe, move me into finished objects. And yes, have you guessed yet? I have a finished object. I have two, two finished objects. Um, the first, and I'm going to kind of scoot up here a little, is my uh, oh, Freebird Shrug, Freebird free bird Cocoon, that's the appropriate term for it, by Annie Lupton, who is Boho Chic Fiber Company on Instagram. And um, this is a one-size-fits-all, and... So I didn't have to worry about sizing or anything, and um, it's just a big, cozy, and I'll turn around and let you get a good look at the cables here. The uh, big, cable goodness shrug thing. So you can see a little bit of the uh, construction here. <laughs> so I'm very happy with how mine turned out. I uh, hmm, finished it. Yesterday. I finished it yesterday on Sunday. Sunday afternoon. Um, yeah. So I'm very happy with this. Um, I knit this out of um, Plymouth Baby Llama Glow. Um, and then I dyed it. It comes in its natural 
creamy color with um it's got a little bit of silver stellina in it and um it's just very soft very very soft the baby llama oh my gosh you guys you go find yourself some baby llama glow because it's awesome um and i ended up only using like three and three quarter skeins instead of five like i anticipated so i have a full skein of this leftover plus like a third of another one something like that i don't know what i just said but anyway I have a lot left over. I might need to make a hat or some mitts or something. So, yeah. I could be all decked out in my uh, my bruiser colorway. <laughs> um, and then the other is sitting on my little model here. My other finished object. Now this is the Brooklyn Brocade hat that um, my Instagram friend uh, Adventurous Knits uh, Leah Staggs, um, designed, and I was a test knitter for her, and I liked this hat enough that I decided I was going to make one for my great niece, who I get to go meet this coming weekend, and, um, so I decided I needed to try it on something approximately baby-sized, <laughs> because I had to alter the pattern, um, because this is a, written for adults size heads only, and so I, um, I had to take out one section of the, um, one, one repeat, I, I guess you could say, one repeat of the chart for this hat, which then made the, um, the top not come together in the same way, because you got to have a specific number of repeats to make the hat work out. So, um, with one less repeat, um, I did it on size seven needles. And, um, I used DK weight instead of bulky weight. And because the original pattern, again, is for an adult in bulky weight yarn. And this yarn, in case you're curious, and, what? dropping things, is Madeline Tosh, Tosh DK, um, in the, where is it? Chamomile colorway. So bright happy yellow so I will be taking oh and I decided to do a little i-cord finish for the hat with a tie a little knot in it so this will be for my little niece and um my little model here is uh my childhood toy uh she does not have a name I was not big on naming my childhood toys apparently um but this is a bear that my mother made for me when I was a uh, I don't know maybe eight seven or eight years old and um this dress that she's wearing i had a matching dress because my mother sewed me and my teddy bear matching dresses <laughs> so yes so that is it that was my finished objects <sighs> and well not all my finished objects where did it go it's over here i you can't see what's inside yet, sorry. I came up with a new size of project bag. Now, this is, I'm, is, I love this fabric. I think I showed this fabric on the podcast once before. But, um, there's my little, my little label. Da -da -da. So, new project bag. And this one is for me. I'm keeping it. You can't have it, sorry. Um, so that is a finished object, a sewing finished object, and, um, sorry, there's a fly buzzing around in here, <laughs> distracted me for a moment. So that is a medium size, um, I will show you right now. This is a large size, you see, uh. I could do what uh, <laughs> a few podcasters, but most recently one watched is make a bad wolf girl sits in it. The head test. It could be a hat. I mean, I can get my head into it. <laughs> okay, that's ridiculous. Um, but then, sorry, I'm looking down here in my basket full of project bags. Um, here's my small size. So here's large. Here's small. There's quite a 
quite a bit of difference between the sizes. So let's see if I can do this somehow. Small, medium, large. I now have three sizes of bag. I do not have any bags list listed as of yet. I will probably do that tomorrow. Um, get a lot of bags listed online, but medium will be the last to go up because I don't have any made up, cut out, anything, nothing. So, um, yes. So that is my, uh, my finished objects, sewing and knitting. Uh, I guess that can move me on into works in progress. Um, let's see here. What am I going to start with? It's in this one. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I, since it's been two weeks since I, uh, podcast last, I kind of, I, I have several new cast ons for you. Um, and the hat was one of them and it's also a finished object. So you never saw it in progress. Um, but this is the start of another Brooklyn Brocade hat. Can you tell I like the pattern? <laughs> anyway, um, this is in the Perfect Stitch Fiber Company yarn. And that's the tag that fell on the floor a minute ago. Sorry. Bumping. Hi. Um, so this is the Aurora Borealis colorway from Perfect Stitch Fiber Company. Um, it's a chunky yarn, but I think I can make it work even though it's just meant to be like air and weight yarn. <laughs> um, so I'm just like, you know, I'm going to do what I feel like doing when it comes to knitting. So <laughs> I have a brim and the very little bit beginning of the chart started on this, but I actually started this at the same time I started the yellow one for the baby. So I was just I was feeling cast on itis and I'm like, I need to cast on two hats right now. So that is living in my bags she built, uh, limited edition vintage linen project bag. And then this one living in my sunshine and bubble gum. Weezing Wizard project bag. Here's the uh, Sunshine and Bubblegum label. I love the fabric on the inside of this. It's just this deep royal bluey purple with gold polka dot stars. So pretty. So anyway, I am doing a vanilla sock out of my nomadic yarns that I showed you on the last podcast, I think it was. So this is my uh, Bellatrix colorway. And I'm doing this sock one at a time, toe up, obviously. Um, and I did the thing with the, I did the thing with the foot. Me, see, there's my foot. Um, if you couldn't tell, I have duck feet. Seriously, this is what my mother calls them. They're duck feet. She has them too. Thanks, mom. Yeah, so my feet are very wide and very short. Where's size seven women's? Um, so I have just been, I, I cast on, I believe it was 16 because I do have wide feet. I cast on 16 stitches, increased to 32 stitches. So I don't have a very long toe box, but I do, it works. I've tried it on. So, um, and I've just been knitting away. I needed something that didn't take a lot of thought. I just needed something that I could knit in circles. So I did. Um, and then I decided on this to try my very first ever Fish Lips Kiss Heel. And I think it turned out all right. Obviously it needs to be blocked because it's the increase and decrease side is a little wonky looking right now. But I, I think I think I'm gonna like it. I think it's gonna work. And I did the heel. Um, it's not in the in the nomadic yarns, it's in Lolo did it, the pretty little zombies colorway. So, and that is something that I used on my Find Your Vape shawl. It was my very beginning part. So I had a bunch of this left over and I'm like, mm, well, find something to do with it. And I did. It kind of works out really nicely. Goes, um, the greens go with the green and the gray stripes right here and the burgundy matches. So it, I'm like, that'll work. I like that. 
And uh, I have my little um, wizard snack box, box from Simply Serving HK on here. This is going to go in the HP Yarnaholics cowl that's being hosted by Lucky Jenny Knits and the Knitted Cupcake podcasts, Lacey and Jen. People I actually talk to online via virtual knit night occasionally. People I know. So, And, uh, yeah. So that is that whip. Living in the wizard bag. And then I will show you now what is in this one. I've been thinking about this for quite a while. And, um... Over the weekend, I did my trunk show, which I will uh, elaborate on more a little bit later. But while I was there, I decided to uh, cast on the Sunset Highway pullover sweater. And I have made quite a bit of progress for just a couple days. I'm going to take that off. I don't really need it on there at the moment. But I will show you what it is in a minute here. So, I'm trying to pull this. Because it's a little curled up on the needles right now. So, here we go. This is where I'm at with it. I have gotten a little ways into the color work chart. Cast on the neck line. And did the short rows. And now I have started color work. So... So far, so good. I'm liking it. It's coming together pretty quickly. This is uh, two days of work. So, and my color work, my floats seem to be all right. Um, I, I, I was a little bit concerned, but when I, you know, pull them out, so like when I would block it, they look all right. So they, they're not too bunched up or anything. So I think they're going to be okay. I think my floats are good. I'm not a super experienced color work knitter. Um, but I have done a little bit before. So I'm hoping that this works out really, really well. Because I really like the sweater. So, yes. So the yarns I am using for this. This deep blue is... My brain. Okay, let me look at my notes. I did write notes today, but do I have the book open in front of me? Of course not. Why would I do that? All right. So it's Jorstad Creek, which is a dyer who is based in Olympia. So I got to meet the dyer this weekend. She was at the truck show. Um, and the base is Whidbey which is, if you're from Washington, you know the reference. It's an island in the sound. Um, and it's Whidbey Superwash Sock. So it's sock weight yarn. And the colorway is Delta Blue. Um, and then this light lighter color is... You may recognize it. I've used it in more than one project already. This is the third one. It's the Malabrigo Sock in the water green colorway. I had leftovers enough to make another project work with it so I'm like it's a color I love anyway so it's it's got to happen um and then I'm going to be using and this is where we uh work into acquisitions sorry I keep I have a basket down there and the basket's touching the and my slipper fell off and my feet are cold it's cold here you guys I actually need this shrug today um so, hmm, I'm going to be working into acquisitions with this whip because I bought to make this sweater. So, let me put that out of the way over here. So, I bought the Jorstad Creek and then I bought... You guys are going to laugh at the pile of acquisitions I have for you in a minute. Um, this. So I'm. I've got. This is the Plymouth Happy Feet 100 Splash. It's 
a 9010 superwash merino wool nylon blend and it's very very autumnal speckly colors um which is not normally colors i would go for but this i've been looking at this at the black sheep yarn boutique for quite a while it's been she's had it in her on her sock yarn rack for quite a while and i'm just like I need to make a sweater out of that. And I've been thinking about the Sunset Highway, so I got enough for the Sunset Highway. So I bought the Jorstad Creek and the Sunset Highway, or the, and, and the uh, Plymouth Happy Feet. And then I had, where did it go? Good Lord. I have one more color that needs to be thrown in here so I can show you guys my, uh, oh, there it is. Um, so along with my Malabrigo sock, I have, it's hard to see. This is not doing it very good color justice, but I will, I will try to take a picture and insert later. But uh, the blues are picked up in the speckles here, as is this olive green and the pale water green color. I think it just all works together really well. And I think it's going to make a very nice Sunset Highway sweater. So, I'll set these behind me in my crazy bird chair. Oh, and I did take a drink of something, so I suppose I should mention it. This is my usual um, early afternoon drink. It's, oh, uh, my brain, what is it? I make this by the two quart pitcher and put it in the fridge. It's tea. Good earth sweet and spicy tea. And so I drink it cold and it's yummy. So I guess now moving on into acquisitions. I got a little bit yarn crazy. As a few other podcasters would say, I, I indulged in the wool piggery. Totally. Totally, 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 totally. So first, um, back right after Hurricane Harvey, Lauren of Lolo Did It um, decided to do a yarn colorway that would help raise funds for the Red Cross to help the victims of Hurricane Harvey. So, I ordered one of those skeins. So, I felt like I was being a good person here. <laughs> and at the same time, being a selfish person. <laughs> so, that came sometime last week, I think. And this is it. So, it's helping hippos. Well, if you know anything about Lolo Did It, a lot of the colorways that she does involve hippos if they have a gray base the name so like they're hippo for mother's day hippo for cinco de mayo <laughs> i don't know she had lots of uh i don't this is my first hippo color and it's the helping hippos so i love it because it's got all these awesome bright colors but it's also got the gray base which is i like the gray base a lot so, that's one skein. Now, be prepared, because there's lots more. Um, I'm trying to get things arranged here on my little desk so that they don't fall off, and yet I can show you all. All right, so, I started following Jessica Ruth Knits on Instagram, and she has a Instagram destash page going. I will put that up on the screen for you if you want to go check it out because it's still going at least as of yesterday when I was on Instagram. So, um, she, but she's been doing it for a couple weeks now. She has been trying to raise money to help pay for all the medical treatment she's gone through and trying to get pregnant and she is pregnant. Oh, I haven't watched her podcast yet. She's on my list of people to watch. Um, and she's, um, yeah, 
she's destashing a lot. I'm like, where? I, I keep watching her destash page and I'm like, where did all this yarn come from? I need to go watch her podcast and figure it out. <laughs> anyway, um, so I bought not just one, not two, not three, six skeins of yarn. Six. But one was a fade kit, which kind of came as a bundle. So, but they're all different brands. But first I will show you the one that I bought individually. And that would be this Barking Dog Yarns. <laughs> it just made me happy. I'm like, I like it. And it's very soft. And this is on the Achilles base, which is an 80-20 um, merino nylon blend. Uh, 400 yards. And this is their popsicle colorway. I don't think I've ever heard of Barking Dog Yarns before, but I like what I see right here. And it's very soft. Very, very soft. So that's one. And you're like, where am I going to put all this yarn? Goodness. You'll see a pile growing behind me as I go here. And then the fade, which I'm probably not going to actually do the fade for anything, but I liked all the yarn, so I got all the yarn. So... Here is Lorna's Laces um, from November 2016. It's on her Shepherd Sock Base, which is 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon. And I believe <laughs> the, the color is called Laurel Eyes. <laughs> Laurel Eyes. I wonder if this has something to do with Lorelei Gilmore. Maybe. I don't know. But I like the color. And then this one is from Hand Knits and Things, HKNT, on the John Henry base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. 463 yards. And this color is called Sea Spray. Ooh, I didn't see that bright green in there under the label. So, another pretty blue. They're all in the blue-ish family. And then there was this, um... <clears throat> Herbstblatt Regina. Herbstblatt Regina? <laughs> it's... German-ish, I guess. I, I, I couldn't help. Um... This is on the Hazel Soft Sock Fingering Weight. It's mm, it's 80% sure, sure wool, virgin merino wool, super wash, and 20 cent, 20 cents, 20% 20 polyamide. So, and this is untypical fall colors. I can get behind that. I like untypical. And then the next one is... Artistic Lily and uh, I'm not sure but I think this colorway is called Yarn Snob <laughs> I'm like I'm such a yarn snob lately oh man so this is uh, 437 yards it's got this bits of black and teal and cream and it's, I like it. I've been very much on a blue kick lately with my yarn. So this is all just making me happy. This next one is from Teeny Button Studios. Teeny Button Studio. Um, and this is on the Shimmer Sock Base. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little bit of a, you can kind of see it there. A little bit of Stellina in here. It's uh, 7525. <laughs> Superwash Merino Nylon Stellina Blend. And there's 438 yards. And the colorway is called You Can't Stop the Beat. And I I like this, these rusty colors mixed in with this bright, vibrant, purpley pink and pale blue. It's just, just looks good. I like it. I have no plans for any of this, by the way. It's just, I had to have it yarn. Which is terrible, I know. And the last one from that D stash purchase is BU Fibers. And this colorway 
which I think is my favorite out of the whole set that I bought, is called Beach Wedding. And it's... This one is super duper soft. I'm just going to lay here and lay on it take a nap. I'll come talk to you guys later. Sorry. I'm napping now. Alright. I know. I'm goofball. So, see, I told you I was going to have a pile growing back here. Of course, it's sitting on top of another project. But... When I opened my box from Jessica Ruth Knits, there was not just yarn in it. Let me, oh, let's see here. She included this super cute Christmas project bag. And it's, it's a little smushed from being crammed in with all the yarn, but it's got the box shape. And let's see here. It's one of these, uh, Big rectangles, basically. And I haven't used it yet because I don't have any Christmas projects that will fit in it. I need to use this when I start stockings, which I need to do very soon. This would be a good bag to make my stockings, Christmas stockings, out of. So it's one of these long ones that have the little little handle up here. I, I've never had any of this style. And so she just threw that in because I uh, spent so much money on yarn, I think. <laughs> but it was very sweet of her. I was like, thank you. You're so sweet. So, so yes, I have a Christmas project bag. And then, yeah, and then, I know, right? Well, let's see here. I was up at my local yarn shop a couple weeks ago thinking about those Christmas stockings. And, sorry, I have to reach way over here on the other side of the desk. Um, and I'm, I was thinking, I want to do um, a Christmas stocking for my teenage son in Seattle Seahawks colorway. So, or colors... So I've got this uh, Dona Donna fine Italian style merino. Um, it's a hundred percent merino. I got these two as that brand, um, and it's a light worsted. And then I got these two Cascade two twenty superwash, which is a uh, regular worsted weight so I think they should work okay together um, to do a color work stocking so those are the colors of James's Christmas stocking and I'm like where am I gonna put all these behind me in the chair of course because why would my butt go in the chair and then yes there's more I put an order in I, every now and then I've been looking at the Knit Picks website. And I'm like, I kind of want to get some Felici. There had not been any. So, I checked again a couple weeks ago. And there was some Felici in. So, I went a little nuts on the Felici. <coughs> Excuse me. Still not over this cough. I got this one, which is Witch's Brew. <laughs> so I got two of Witch's Brew. And then I got two of Captain Nemo. Which those two are very similar to each other. And then I got two of, what is this, Stone Harbor, lighter colors, like seashore type colors. And then I got, I know we keep hearing and then, and then. Ah, oh, yes, Cheshire Grin. Cheshire Cat re uh, inspired. And then, this is the last one, I promise, out of this bag anyway. <laughs> I'm terrible, you guys, I'm terrible. Um, mint chip. So, 
Like I said, I've been bitten by the sock bug. I haven't cast too many on yet, but I've been bitten by the sock bug. Majorly. So, that's all my Felici. And then... I was looking online at some other Maker's Project bags. And I saw this one. By Fate's Thread. Uh, I think my sister's here. Hang on. <sighs> Sorry about that. It wasn't my sister. It was the mailman. Okay, so, anyway. Back to this bag. By Fate's Thread. I could not resist this tattoo style Doctor Who. So... I have a new project bag, but then, like, within a few minutes, literally, of me placing my order for this bag, it's just a simple gray lining, I get a message via Etsy from the maker of this bag, and she's like, can we do a trade? I would really, really, really like your yarn, the, uh, can't decide between this one and this one, and I was like, um, well, yeah, we can do a trade, of course. Um... And so she had requested either the Happy Go Lucky or the um, Blueberry Smash colorway. Um, and I was like, well, I have a skein ready to go of Happy Go Lucky and Sock Weight. And I have a partially used skein of blueberry smash from my find your fade so i wound off a mini for her from the blueberry smash and i sent her the full skein of happy go lucky and she sent me oh, cyberman Woo! <laughs> and at the same time i had also ordered let me see here i'll do this so you can see it um when i ordered the uh, tattoo style bag I had also ordered this little uh, police box progress keeper, which I just love. So it's it's just the perfect size. So, okay, Fitbit, why are you buzzing at me? Oh, my sister is now on her way, texting me. So, two new project bags, Doctor Who, woohoo! <laughs> and I'm almost done, finally. It's, uh... This one. This is also a Jorstad Creek yarn, like I'm using in my sweater. But this one is for my husband, Brian, who's going to be getting a pair of socks out of this. I thought that was fun and masculine, and he would like these. He might end up with some of my Felici as socks as well, but I don't know yet. So, we made it through acquisitions. I cannot believe it, you guys. I mean, look at this, look at this pile back here. It's ridiculous. Oh, you can't see it. All right. Big pile under the... <laughs> it's crazy. All right. Now, can I put this back down where it was? Kind of. Oh, this leg wants to fall down. <laughs> That's better. Okay. So... Yarn. Oh, I'm, I didn't even put the Felici in the chair, you guys. It's still on the desk over here. <laughs> uh, two weeks, and this is what comes into my house. And I'm like, I can't put out that much. I need to stop buying yarn. Anyway. I guess. Let's see here. I should look at... You know what? Give me a minute here. I'm going to empty my chair so I can be comfortable. Three new project bags, like six, no, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's seriously ridiculous. Way, way, way too much yarn came into my house this past week. This came in a long time ago. It doesn't count, but I haven't wound it yet. That's for my, my sweater. Oh, 
good lord, stocking stuff. This is this is just nuts, you guys. Just just nuts. Don't fall. Don't fall. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Go. I was like sitting right on the edge of the chair and not very comfortable. So, let me check my notes here. Make sure I'm on track. I think I am, but I'm can't hurt to check. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess the shop update is in order. Here, you can look at my little uh little Miss Teddy Bear there. Um I showed you a couple of the uh I'm going to pull my little basket full of bags up here. Um I showed you these two project bags, my large and my small. Oh, and this fell in here. That's nice. In the Fate Thread trade, she gave me this cute little set full of uh, sweatery things. That that wishbone one was on a little thank you card, but I just clipped it to this. So I got a bunch of new stitch markers, too. <laughs> so the... Uh, Wow, that one's upside down. Awesome. This is a, might be a, it's on sale bag. Because <laughs> I, I cannot believe I did that. The fabric is upside down from the way it should be. This is what it should look like. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. There's a bag for you. And then this is the small bag. And... So these are all going to be going on Etsy, and I have multiples of each size in each print. So here is this small stag head print, and here's a large fantastic Mr. Fox. I don't know. He's just a fox wearing a scarf bag with this fun teal coordinating fabric. And here is a large sheepy bag and a large and here's the coordinating fabric on that one large stag head bag and this is my favorite and I might steal one for myself it's the kitty cat with the flower crown bag <laughs> And this has got just a simple gray and white triangles coordinating bag. That's the big bag. And then I have a small Mr. Fox bag. And a small kitty bag. And a small sheepy bag. It's a lot of bags. So... All of those, hopefully this week, will be, um, i got to go create a bunch of listings on Etsy for those bags. And I'll find that book over. That's pretty much all I needed to talk about. Yep. I don't think it's long notes. Episode 20. You guys, this is episode 20. I've been doing this for that long. My goodness. So, this week, besides listing the shop full of project bags. I'm also sending, finishing off and then taking by hand delivery um, a set of 10 bags that is going to be part of Jen's, um, Jen of the Perfect Stitch Fiber Company, her, her first anniversary kit. Um, she has posted some sneak peeks of that on Instagram. Uh, you should go check it out. She does not have the bag yet, so she can't send the kit, but I'm heading, I'm going to be in, like, heading her direction this weekend to go visit family, so I was like, hey, you want to just meet up and save some postage? <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to actually deliver the bags directly to her hands. Um, yes. So this past weekend, yesterday... 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and yesterday was Sunday, since today is Monday. Makes sense, huh? Um, I was able to do a trunk show with my bags at the Black Sheep Yarn Boutique, and this is up in Olympia, um, north of me by about 45 minutes. Um, and I have kind of become friends with the owner, Michelle, and, um, I, you know, because I just like to go in there and I sit in it for a while because I don't really have a actual in real life knitting group here at home. So I will, when I'm up in Olympia running errands, which I am fairly frequently every couple of weeks or so, um, I stop in and hang out and knit and talk and I don't always get to see Michelle, but the other ladies that are in there are very nice. Joan is very nice and, um, yeah. So, a while back, after, you know, hanging out there for months on end, um, <laughs> she uh, invited me to bring my bags for a trunk show, um, and they did a Step Into Yarnia, Narnia-themed um, crawl, um, yarn crawl. Uh, it was her shop, and... I think about five or six other shops within, you know, an hour or so of each other. Um, and it was high traffic, very busy. I spent most of my weekend sitting in the yarn shop knitting, which is how this thing got done, how the hat got done, how the other sweater got started. It was a good weekend for knitting. Um, <clears throat> so I think I did pretty well. I went in with 60 bags. I don't, I still haven't counted how many I actually came home with, but I sold just under, well, I sold enough that I didn't feel like it was a waste of time. I definitely overmade the amount I needed, but I figured those can all go in my Etsy shop. That's cool. But I just wanted to be prepared. I had no idea what to expect. And I feel like I did pretty good considering lots of people really, I mean, it was so fun, I, especially Saturday. That seemed to be the busiest day and there were lots of people in and out. And I think I sold the most bags on Saturday. And, um, what they would do is every, everything got run through the store. Um, so they all, you know, just paid at the register. And then at the end, Michelle gave me a check for all the bags that I sold, but, um, it was just so nice. It was, it was fun to see people appreciate my bags the way that I appreciate my bags. And they're like, ah, this is so adorable. I gotta have it. And I'm like, but I can't decide which print I want. Do I want the cats or the foxes or what? You know? So there were, there would be people walking around the store with multiple bags in their hands. And I'm like, <laughs> so it's it's fun to make something and know that somebody else is going to enjoy it so much so that's part of why i make things is it, it brings me joy it brings other people joy so yeah even if i get a little frustrated at times but anyway so trunk show success very much so um, so I guess that's out of shop stuff and into life stuff. Um, so the reason I did not podcast last week is besides having this cold, chest cold thing going on, which is still going on, but it's not as bad as it was last week. Um, <clears throat> I have had some medical issues that are still unresolved. I don't know exactly what's going on. Um, but last week when I did not podcast, it was more because uh, this thing that I have going on and not the cold. Although the cold didn't help. <laughs> um, I'm just not... In, my body is not comfortable right now. I've kind of become accustomed to being uncomfortable, which is not a good thing. Um, I, since I don't really know what's going on, 
I don't have an answer for what's going on. I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly how to explain it. I mean, I don't want to go into too much detail because private life, you know, but, um, <laughs> let me, let me try to explain. It's, um, I, um, two weeks ago now, um, I, on the day I last podcast, actually, um, my feet started going numb and it was just the soles of my feet. And then it gradually crept up my body and I'm mostly numb from the waist down. The outside of my thighs are the only thing that aren't. And I did decide to go to urgent care on Saturday, a week ago, Saturday. And all they did, despite the fact that I know it was, it was a wasted trip in my opinion. They, uh, they did a finger prick for testing blood sugar, which was normal. And they also did an A1C test, which is a test, if you don't know, for people to check their, um, blood sugar level in a more comprehensive way. And, um, I'm like, yes, I know I am plus sized. I'm overweight. I get it. I am not diabetic. But that's all they did for me. So, there's that. So then I decided on Monday to call a local chiropractor who happens to be the baby sister of an aunt who is married to one of my dad's brothers. So, um, I have never actually met her in person until last week, but I knew who she was and that she was sort of vaguely related to me. <laughs> um, and, uh, so I went and saw her and she was very, very knowledgeable and friendly. And, um, I was very happy with that experience. Um, she worked me over really good. She did a quite a bit of adjustments and it seemed to help for a little bit to relieve some of my issues with my legs, but only for a few hours. And then it was back to numbness. I mean, the numbness never fully went away, but, um, then, um, so that Wednesday, that past this past week on Wednesday, I decided to go back to the chiropractor's office, but see the massage therapist. And she worked me over really good. And I, my muscles were like, why did you do that? But it was so worth it because my body is, I get very tense, especially having to sit and sew for hours and hours and hours on end between my job and my fun time. <laughs> yeah. So that was good. And then this morning I was scheduled for another chiropractor appointment. So I went in to my chiropractor appointment and she asked me how I was doing. And I said, well, nothing's really changed. In fact, it's kind of gotten a little worse. And she's like, well, here's the deal. You need to go see a neurologist. And I'm like, ah, crap. So that is where I'm at right now. I have an appointment with my regular doctor and a neurologist both coming up this month and this week is my doctor and then in a couple weeks is the neurologist because they're busy and that's when they could get me in that was as soon as they could get me in so i don't know what's going on i'm not very comfortable as a physical being right now but i want to be so i'm trying to get it resolved It feels like, okay, this is, if you wear tall boots and you've been wearing them all day and you go take them off and it still kind of feels like you're wearing those tall boots, it's kind of how my legs feel right now, but with a little bit of that, my feet are just starting to wake up from being asleep with the circulation cut off feeling. 
but that's it's like that all the time like all the time it, it's very frustrating so if you are a praying person please pray for me because i need some healing and i uh yeah <sighs> that's been my my past week and a half two weeks is dealing with feeling like that and not knowing how to deal with feeling like that and yeah so i've got lots of knitting done though which is excellent of course you know standing upright to do things like cook dinner for my family has been interesting i've finally gotten to this point where i basically have to force myself to get up and walk around because i cannot lay down flat on my back all the time it's just not feasible <laughs> it doesn't work i have things to do i have a life to live and i cannot be on my back all the time so yeah sorry to be a bummer you guys but that's just what's going on right now and uh i almost did not podcast again this week because of the way i'm my attitude is about this but I was like, well, you saw the pile of yarn that I had to go through. I was like, I need to podcast. I need to show my finished objects. I need to talk happy stuff because knitting is happy stuff for me and physical stuff right now is not. So, yeah. I was going to take some video at the yarn store this weekend, too, and I totally forgot. I was too busy being a knitter and not a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> so yes so in general I've, I've been trying to keep a good attitude and uh just do lots of knitting to keep happy but uh yeah that's that's it um so i guess i should stop rambling now life has been full for various reasons <laughs> and it's going to be at another full week and weekend between all my sewing and then travel this weekend to the other side of the state i'm going to visit my baby great niece who gets the yellow hat and uh yeah i'm looking forward to that because it's going to be a grown-up girls only trip it's me and my mom and my sister sarah and my sister-in-law deborah and we're going over to my older sister April's house. And then we're all going to go up to Spokane and visit baby and nephew and niece. And it's going to be good. So, and I will get lots of knitting done because I'm not the driver. And it's a five plus hour drive, five or six, seven, sometimes eight, depending on which route you take, drive to Eastern Washington. So, yay. All day knitting. <laughs> so all right i will let you guys go have a good week and i hope i will have a good podcast for you next week with maybe some better news about my body anyway happy knitting and i will talk to you guys soon bye-bye <laughs>